So we're going to get started now. So we've got a quorum. So we um, we took before the break we um, we were uh, just about to deal with this resolution in relation to the regional tourism office. Uh, so Councillor Forsyth, where are you at with your amendment? You still withdraw the amendment, thanks. Okay, right. So that's off, thanks. All right, so we've got a motion. Uh, any uh, debate on this? Yes, Councillor Mount. Uh, I speak against the motion uh, simply because I think we are already too close to a headroom in terms of, so any opportunity to increase our spending should be rejected. And I'm also very against picking winners in terms of um, what particular industries we decide to support. And I don't know why we support tourism over panel beating, to be honest. Okay, <laughs> any other? Yes, Councillor King. Yeah, I'm speaking against the motion for this. Um, yesterday we voted to break our 2012-22 um, debt cap, and then yesterday I asked the question, is this all about filling in the triangle, using up every dollar, using up all the money? Uh, I voted against the Heritage um, Amendment for the same reason, a motion for the same reason. Um, it's just asking the accountants how, how many coins are left in the piggy bank and making sure we use every last one. Uh, I just think it's ridiculous. It's not the way you run a business. So it's not about the motion. It's not about this particular point, as it wasn't with the heritage. It's about just emptying at the piggy bank. Uh, Deputy Mayor, then uh, Councillor McPherson. Yes, thanks, uh, Your Worship. Um, I'm obviously speaking uh, for the motion. Uh, it reminds me of a user pays process and I think that the tourism <coughs> group should soon be thinking about a bed night tax so that visitors uh, to the city can make some contribution as they do elsewhere, I think in New Zealand and certainly internationally. And it's not unexpected for a contribution to be made that way from uh, tourism operators who simply pass the tax on to the user. Thank you, Councillor McPherson. Yeah. In addition to the Deputy Mayor's comments, which I support in principle, um, I note that Hamilton Waikato Tourism has a policy right now, in, and, and for the last few years, of using their um, promotional funds to leverage extra funding from the industry. So, for instance, when they run a campaign um, for people to fly in from Australia to here, um, the likely recipients of those tourist income inbound tourists are that the companies, the accommodation or the food catering companies, transport whatever, um, are asked for a contribution of like for like value, value almost. So that sort of thing is already happening to a certain extent here. I think, um, as the Deputy Mayor said in his earlier speech on this, uh, it's be, we're not um, sort of driving winners and losers here. We're actually supporting a winner. This is a, an industry that has grown, one that l lagged a long way behind for many years. We've proved that the investment in recent times has been successful in terms of growing this industry and in terms of economic development in our whole area, and particularly in Hamilton, we've, um, with the change of focus when it was the organisation was reformed to Hamilton and Waikato Tourism, Hamilton started to see some place in the sun in the tourism industry in this region as opposed to being bypassed, to be honest, and both figuratively and literally in the past. And uh, I think we, it's a matter of us having seen that the investment works and wishing to provide further investment within our means. Now, it's not a matter of, as my colleague Councillor King has said, of filling in the triangle. It's a matter, this resolution suggests that we think it's a worthwhile thing to invest more in, and we're asking our leaders to discuss with the rest of the local government sector in this area, how we can do that in, a, in an affordable way. 
It doesn't mean spending every last cent. It may be that uh, someone else can't afford very much at all, so everyone's contribution is only a small proportionate amount. I don't know the answer to that, but we are signalling that we think it's an industry worth investing in because the return the community in an economic development sense gets from this is worthwhile for the whole community. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'll just um, also add some comments. Um, I was interested, um, the Deputy Mayor, just about you raising about you know a bed tax because as councils will know, the local government New Zealand um, Working Party on Infrastructure Funding uh, released their report in the last couple of days, and they did make reference to areas such as Queenstown, or who have a population, resident population, I think of around about 18,000, which blows up to about 60,000, and the Coromandel's in the same boat. And how do you fund infrastructure to support those sorts of populations coming to your place as a premier destination? nation in New Zealand. Um, and I know that there is a lot of talk going on in the tourism sector about how we how we do this better. Um, the second comment I'd like to make is um, uh, I absolutely reject, uh, certainly from my point of view, filling in triangles. Uh, this is an operational uh, budget matter, not a capital budget matter. Uh, so there's a distinction. Uh, and secondly, um, uh, for me, it's very, very important that we maintain our, you know, a prudent fiscal approach to both a capital budget and an operating budget. Uh, and I certainly am wanting to make sure we maintain a buffer. And as we have yesterday with what we signed off on the capital budget, there is still a significant buffer uh, in, our, um, in our capital expenditure as it rolls out over the 10 years. And I'm keen to see that maintained. Uh, I think this resolution is actually bigger than it than it is on the board, because this is a I guess if you like an endorsement by this council that Hamilton does take the leadership role in the region in discussing how we fund regional matters, and it picks up on some comments that we made yesterday that um, I see Councillor Gallagher were reported in the newspaper this morning, and I, I think that's good, because we are uh, the large player in the region. We do have a leadership role in this, and because of uh, the commitments that all local authorities in this region are having to make on infrastructure and those things, we do need to start the conversations across the region about these sorts of things and other regional facilities and assets. And uh, this is just one, but one of many. Uh, so I think a lot of this year is going to be about those conversations and getting our heads around as a region and not being precious about the lines on the map so that we can deliver um, a more efficient, a more effective, cost-effective delivery of a lot of things in the region. And Hamilton does have a leadership role in that. And this is, if you like, an endorsement by this council that we do need to spend a lot more time generating those discussions and taking a role in that to um, get our, I guess, our fellow TAs down a, a, a route of a useful conversation. So. Um, so look, I'm very happy to go away and have those uh, discussions about the RTO, but I think it's a, it's a bigger discussion than that because um, I, I think it's coming to to that point. Uh, so yeah, so I'll support um, the recommend uh, the motion. Now, who do I, I had Councillor Gallagher, and then I had um, just a Mallard. point of clarification. Mm. I just have a question of what you said. Mm. Yeah. Do you mind if I speak, or are you going to? Uh, I've got Councillor Gallagher yeah, sure. to speak, but if it was a yeah, it was just a point of clarity. Mm. You said at the start it's not about filling up the gap, but mm. to the extent that uh, excess operating expenditure reduces our um, surplus and/or increases our deficit, of course, mm. it does have an impact on our debt, doesn't it? You know, it? that's that's yeah. why, um, of course, this is saying, well, is it doable or not? Mm. And I was simply speaking personally, Councillor Mount, that I'm not in the business of colouring in all the the white spaces at all. Uh, other councillors may have to have a different approach, but I'm just speaking for myself. That was exactly the questions that were asked. Mm. <coughs> Thank you, Councillor King. I, I understand what your point was, and I'm just making mine. Now, I've got Councillor Gallagher, you want to speak? You said that, that was about this meeting and the flavour of this meeting, and it was not about no, the triangle. I said from my point of view, I'm not making decisions about filling in the triangle. That's not how I'm approaching decision making. Um, Councillor Gallagher. Yeah, I'll be supporting Councillor McPherson and the Deputy Mayor's uh, motion as a, uh, a way forward. I will observe if we look at the page on 226 about the quantums that other uh, areas 
uh, spending and the difference uh, between us and Auckland, for example, uh, they would actually bring a particular quantum or a, a strategy to the relevant uh, council committee of the Auckland Council and would get on with it. In Waikato, basically the progress of this region appears to be set at the speed of the slowest territorial authority. So as part of our sort of review of governance and strategic direction, hopefully the Waikato plan may help inform that, we need to have those kind of tin tack uh, discussions. Uh, because basically the slowness of the way and the tortuous way in which the poor old RTO uh, comes and tries and gets an, a new funding quantum from this region seems very slow and tortuous and there's got to be a better way of how all of this is done. <coughs> the only thing that we appear to have at the moment is the mayoral forum and I totally respect that the mayor will have to be by her office more diplomatic than I will be but we really do need to get cracking in some of these areas that are, are significant uh, economic drivers. Right, any other speakers for or against? Okay, so we're going to go and vote on the board. Carried nine votes for and two against. Thank you, thank you. Sean, uh, next item is uh, item 10, living wage. Page 172. Page 172 is the <coughs> report. Uh, Ollie, this is your report. Yes, it is. Good morning, Your Worship. Good morning, councillors. Uh, the only uh, points I'll make on the on the report is to please note the assumptions and the limitations that have been listed, and that the figures are estimates based on the variabilities um, within the living wage uh, methodology. Uh, Recommendation is council does not accept the living wage. I'm happy to take any questions. Right. Questions? I don't have any questions, but I do, do want to speak. At some when, when the time comes, right. Okay, so again, councillors, this is an unfunded item, so if it is to be um, <coughs> debated, it would have to, a motion would have to be moved. Are there any questions? Yes, do you have a question? I'm happy, no, happy to move when we're ready. To, to move the recommendation when we're ready. Right, okay. <coughs> the person was first dibs on that. No. Uh, yeah, but, uh, you know, if you're moving that, that's fine. So just so you understand, Councillor Pascoe, it's not funded. If you want it funded, you move a motion. Uh, no, I was going to move the recommendation that Council does not adopt a living wage. The okay, point. so that's the point, that's the current status? So you don't need to make a motion to oh, achieve yeah. that. Yeah. What, you, okay. what you're doing at the moment. Like that. All right. Um, Councillor yeah, McBeth. Yeah, Your Worship, uh, as one of the people that's proposed the Council look at this, yep. I still support the concept of it, uh, the mechanics of it. I don't think uh, perhaps as clear-cut as the General Manager's report has said, there are several different um, aspects to the living wage that could be introduced that they don't all, the whole lot, as box and dice doesn't have to be introduced. But having said that, I don't think this is the appropriate time to debate it. While I'm a supporter, I'm not the chief advocate for it. I'm not going to be a beneficiary personally of it or anything like that. But I think there are people in the community who strongly feel that this council should be playing a leading role in this area by introducing living wage. And I'm quite certain, or I know, that they're going to be submitting on our LTP to this, and I think following their submission with technical details that they'll be providing and the reasons and uh, which parts of it we should go with first, all that sort of thing, that that will be in a, a more appropriate place and time, I should say, for a debate on it. And um, I think we should be acknowledging in our LTP papers that council management and council itself have done some work on this issue. That's a fact. It's not a point of argument. Um, the general manager spent quite a bit of time on it and so have some other people. Um, and I think then we should see what the public reaction is. <coughs> and uh, I guess I'm signalling that at that point I'll be supporting 
the proposals that come out of the public and be willing to debate it much more extensively then rather than trying to have a big debate for with not enough information at this point. Okay, thank you. Right, any other comments on this? Yes, Councillor Gallagher. I'm broadly supportive of Councillor McPherson's uh, contribution and I think that uh, I'll listen with great interest uh, in terms of the public submissions which I understand are coming. And I think the critical factor is, in terms of the situation we find ourselves in, the, you know, what are the what are aspects uh, that could actually be further advanced? But be listening very, very closely to those submissions. Okay. Right. Okay. Thank you, Ollie. There's no motion on the table. Thank you very much. Thank you, Worship. Okay. So that finishes the um, spreadsheet for the unfunded proposals. Now we're going to go to. Wheelie, wheelie bin, is it? Yeah, wheelie bin. Yes. No, because no, there is no, because it's unfunded, it's not what, required. What happens? Um, we're going to wheelie bin. Wheelie bin, which was page 109 of the December report. Right, one hundred, page 109. And um, this is a, so Chris, is this you? Probably more discussion on targeting the I think so, but you might need to be front and centre. So this is um, this is the wheelie bin uh, topic. So just um, CFO, this uh, this is a, a matter that's already in the budget, but we we made a resolution to advance the funding of the wheelie bins by way of a targeted rate. Now I might just get um, the democracy manager to put that resolution up. But you've not taken this into account in the that, budget, so correct. I'll just hand over to you to. Thank you, Worship. I'll just right? remind councillors that um, the budget, the updated um, draft budget that you've got in front of you, includes recycling wheelie bins, the provision of the actual bins, uh, with a cost of around about two point eight million dollars plus additional bins over the period, making about three million dollars um, from the first of July two thousand and seventeen, in in um, agreement with the timing of the new waste management contract. The revised budget does not include a targeted rate. The proposal document gave this as an option for Council to consider, and Council considered on the 9th and 10th, and is now coming back to have a look at that decision again. Our recommendation remains that the provision for the bins is included. In other words, the cost of the bins is included. It comes from general rates, and is reflected in the surplus as we've uh, projected in the, in the updated budget. We are not recommending a targeted rate, um, though that option is there for Council. If Council was to do the targeted rate, then... That's, that's currently a resolution that we have made, right. right? Yep. If Council does um, retain the targeted rate as per the decision during the 9th and 10th meeting, then the impact would be a flat targeted rate with an increase um, in 2016-17, uh, of rates of 4.48%, and then rates would be 3.8%, 3.8%, and then in 2019-20, would drop back to 3.12% before returning to 3.8%. That would increase the revenue to cover the costs of the bins, including the interest cost, and reducing the debt in the critical 2020 <coughs> one year to a margin of around about $4 million. So that, when we're looking on our sheet... So when you're just... looking on your sheet, mm -hmm. um, in the year 2021, 20, uh, where you have the figure 1.2 million, which I remind you with the changes that we've made today, it's come down to about 432. That figure would eventually come back up to about $4 million. Excuse me, Paul, all those figures you're talking to us from, uh, do we have those on a piece of paper? Um, I have them on a scrap of paper in front of me, which I've, I've been um, just calculating this uh, over the break. So, um, but I can provide okay, these it's as like tables. It's very, very difficult to take in what yep. you're saying. Yeah. So, yeah. so the, that's the why key, I'm going to, the key information. I'm going to ask you: Can you just, just so at the moment it's in the budget, and the figures we've got, it's in the budget now. The capital cost of 2.8 is in the budget. It, it's million. an operating cost because we mm. we effectively give the bins to the households. We don't have. Effectively they're not our asset of, anymore. They're not, yeah. they're not an asset. Each bin is too small to be an asset. So um, they're in the operating budget? So they're in the operating budget. Okay, so if the targeted rate is there, uh, remains, just 
using our sheet here, explain what happens to the debt and the, the balancing the books and all of that. Okay, so the balancing <coughs> the books would be increased in the years where we have a targeted rate. So the surplus would go up by one third of $3 million. So, so looking at our sheet here, so tell us. So 2017, 18 and 19 per the yep. proposal would be increased by approximately $1 million each in surplus in those years. Just, just stop. So people clear that? 17, 18, 19, so the figures we're looking in front of us, the surplus would be a million dollars roundabout greater. That's right. That's that middle table, and it would be increased by... A million a dollars greater than we see on here? That's or right. That, oh, OK, so... You yeah. Increase this by $1 million. Yeah. Okay. Because we so, have excluded the target rate from yep. anything at this okay. stage. So just for example, in 2017, we've got a little, a bar, little green bar which, you know, if I translate my eye across, might be a $3 million surplus, perhaps? Well, you've got the figures above the graph. Oh, oh where are they? Just in that table Sorry, immediately above below. the graph. Right. So oh, 11 million. 11 so, million? No, no. Just stop. Just stop. Yeah. 2007. Just stop. Oh, OK, sorry, I was looking directly up there over here. They're not killed, OK, sorry. Okay, so that's 2.3 million. The and then if you... And you're saying it would be a better by another million, did you say? That's right. OK. So people clear where you're looking, the box above mm -hmm. the graph? At the moment, the 2017 figure is 2.384 million. It would increase by a million in that year, the next year, and the next year, am I right? That's correct. So more, a, a higher surplus. That's correct. Okay. And what would happen to the debt? And, so, and, th and that is exactly the value of the targeted rate, is it? Mm. That's only because of the targeted rate. Yeah, the, t yeah. the targeted rate has um, the $2.8 million cost plus an interest allowance for the time it takes to pay those off. So. All right, then looking at the debt one, which is the first graph. That's right. What years are we looking at and what is the impact? Okay, the impact in the key year, the 2021 year, which is, if you look at the table at the very top, currently has $1.2 million in that point, but as we've made some changes today, is actually 432000 That figure would eventually climb, taking into account the impact on interest, to around about $4 million. So just to be really clear on that, in 2021, as at the time you printed this bit of paper, um, we were $1.2 million over 200%, uh, under 200%, under 200%. Yeah. Under 200%. Yeah. But that, subsequently, that would as improve. to improve. That would to four million. Okay, that but, but subsequent to, to subsequent million. to that, we've had decisions made today, which took the one point two down to what? Four hundred and thirty-two thousand at this stage. Plus four thirty-two, which is so that it would improve plus. by one million. No, no it would four. go to four million. So it's going from four hundred thousand to four million. So that includes the interest. In oh, the that's right. That's too. It's, I, it's, I was thinking two thousand and seventeen. Yeah. It's essentially, isn't it, that our surplus has gone up by a million dollars each year. So over those three years, the debt has come down by three million dollars. Effectively, yes. So does that, uh, looking at the table at the top, the debt table, do, do any of the other figures change before twenty twenty one? Yes. So there would be improvements in two thousand and seventeen by about one million dollars. One million, yeah. 2018 by about 1.1 million dollars, including the int uh, sorry, 2.1 million dollars, yeah, including the interest impact. 2019 probably by about 3.3 um, .3 million dollars, including the interest impact by then, right. and then flowing through to right. to around about four million dollars. Uh, so again, each of those years, the the um, favourable balance on the debt is better by those figures. That's right. right. Okay. Are there any other um, graphs that it impacts on? Uh, it would also uh, impact on your debt to revenue ratio. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's improved. the bottom graph and looking at the table above it, where it's got the percentages, what does it do to those? Um, I and we're looking at the top line, the debt to revenue ratio top line. Can you put that up? So the percentage in 2021 um, would be 200%. Now that is a fraction higher than what you're seeing here because of course we've made those changes this morning. So it would, it would maintain that 200% level. Mm -hmm. It is very marginal on percentages at that, okay. that scale. Right, because it's too small. That's right. It's too small to have a, a percentage impact, okay.
Paul, from your scrap of paper, you were reading out some rate increases. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, so talk about didn't get those at all. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Um, so can you, just, can you just recap again, sorry, for us, the targeted rate um, would be, um, sorry, just to remind us from what it said in, in here, how much per year would that <coughs> charge be for the, is it three years or four years? Chris, what is it? What amount is it? And what period? The, the, as per the resolution, it would be three years. Three years at what amount? Uh, um, it's about $23 a year. Isn't it 54 or so? No, it's 56. It's 56 yeah. across the three years plus the cost of the entry, so it um, worked out at approximately $23 per year. 23 because it's the total cost of the bin is about 56 bucks over the three years. Yeah. Oh, so, 50 right, so it's about $23 a year yeah. for three years that would appear on the rates yeah. statement. How much? $23. $23. $23. Okay. Each, each year, the Uniform yearly charge. Thing, right? Okay. Yeah. But because it's a flat annual charge, yeah. you have a once-off increase in rates to 4.48 per cent. Um, but hang on, so year. we're going up by 3.8? You're going up by 3.8. Plus the 23 means it's 4. Yep. In that year that you introduce yep. the rate, it yep. becomes 4.48 per cent, mm -hmm. and then it returns to 3.8 per cent for the following years because you don't increase the targeted rate, um, similar to the Hamilton Gardens that we discussed yesterday. And then in the year where it stops, it ceases, it drops back to 3.12 per cent. But 3.8 percent is still happening. That's right. But you're saying but because you're coming from a bigger <coughs> a bigger figure. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so, so if we refer again to that um, graph that was I think in the original papers um, around the rates and I'm just finding it rate certainly it's paragraph six point three in your December pack on page five. You can see an example there with the Hamilton Gardens rate where you have a once-off increase in 2014-15. Hang on, Paul. Yep. So we're on page five in your December agenda, and it is at paragraph 6.3. You'll see there's a graph there which is about the rates. So we'll just wait till everyone finds that. No, just wait. Yep. Okay, so everyone got that? Yes. Yep. So... Explain so, so if you have a look at 2014-15, when the Hamilton Gardens rates are increased, um, um, sorry, introduced at that point, there was a once-off increase above the 3.8 percent, and then subsequently in 19, 20, uh, sorry, 18, 19, when those rates are removed again, there is a once-off decrease in the, um, their level of increase. So, because this is a flat rate, the similar approach would occur. But the absolute rates that a person was paying would be $23 per annum higher for three years. Yep. Um, plus 3.8 compounding. Yes. Yes. And, and the gardens, they'll still be in there for at least one of the years, the garden rate? That's right. So, there, so, the, so the percentage increase will be 3.8 plus the effect of the $10 garden rate plus the effect of the wheelie bin. Yeah. The rate of increase will be 3.8%. And but in the year that where the wheelie bins is added, there will be an increase as a result of the wheelie bins. But there would be no further increase happening at that stage for the Hamilton Gardens. Because it's a flat. Because it will be removed at that point. Yeah. No, no, it would be a flat. flat rate. It's a flat rate. You're not increasing it each year. So you just can't. So, just pull yeah. so that. Uh, but the, but the are actual clear. percentage increase in rates is going higher than the 3.8 yeah. in all of those years. No, it's not no, because you're not. You, you have introduced an increase in the first year that you introduced the targeted rate, as per that graph. But because it is a flat rate from that point on, okay. it's you have no the percentage increase. increase is no the growth. Percentage but increase is not increasing. Oh, okay. So uh, just so so the for the uh, for the rate payer, which is all of all of most of us, um, the rates notice shows what you pay for your rates and then there's a line that says Hamilton Gardens $10 and that's for four years and then it goes away. <laughs> Wheelie bins $23 for the three years then it goes away. So they're separate from your general rate which is subject to the 3.8%. Just a little point, uh, they're both plus GST aren't they? 10 plus GST that's, and that's 23 correct. plus GST. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So is that, so just councillors, is that uh, sufficient explanation to understand what that's about and what the consequences are. Mm -hmm. Right, good, yep. okay. Yes, questions. I just have a question about 
the consequences if the targeted rate is not introduced. <coughs> so all the graph numbers would be as you've presented to us. That's right. So if, if we do not have the targeted rate and we retain the, the wheelie bins as we're recommending mm -hmm. within, within the general um, right. rating, then it would be as per our schedules adjusted for those adjustments we've made this morning. So that, that is the recommended position. So operationally, then, what does that mean for the ratepayer having this bin in the household? What does it mean for us? Is it, because it was, um, in reality, it would be gifted to the to the ratepayer if we didn't have the targeted rate. Is that correct? You said it's not it's not a council asset. It's it's not an asset. It's an operational expense in providing the bins. So we effectively buy the bins. They are not assets as defined by the so capital we're, expenditure policy. In plain language, and, are we gifting them? Effectively, we are. Yeah. Um, I think the answer to that question is yes. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the council's buying them, which is all the ratepayers are buying them, yes. and then everyone's getting the bin, just like the aqua bins, yeah. right? Yes. We've all got an aqua bin yeah. for our recycling currently, and that's the same way that happened. So the maintenance of them and the, the, yeah. the ownership of them? I think it would be exactly the same as however well. you fund them between these two options. Operationally, they'll be the same. So, Chris, then when they get into the hands, as our aquabins are, yeah. to the household, yeah. so whether you pay rates or not, you get one, because, um, you know, like there's lots of tenants, so the owner of the property pays effectively. So you've got your bin, you're responsible for your bin. What happens if you lose your bin? Because, yeah. you know, the aquabins are four or five, I don't know how much the aquabins are, 10 bucks or whatever. These ones are a lot more expensive. What, what happens if you lose your wheelie bin or... You know, yeah. I, I guess some of that detail would need to be worked through. But currently with the aqua bins, as I understand it, everyone gets one, mm. and if you, want a, if you want another one, you have to buy it. Correct. Is that, yeah. So if you lose it or whatever, you've got to now buy it. You don't just get given another one. I imagine that would be the same. Yes, I'm getting yep. nods, yep. so this would be probably the same. Yep, yep that, that's the kind of detail I want. And also, I mean, if you're talking about purchasing subsequent bins, there would be the ability to do that, or would each household be limited to one wheelie bin? I think the notion at this time is one per household. Um, I'm not sure that we've thought through in advance whether some households would want two wheelie bins. Because they hold be a lot very, more. It would be very they? unusual, very hold, yeah. I'm, I'm heard, but I guess that some of that detail would work through okay. in the business case as we develop the proposal. Okay. Okay, right. So I've got a list of people with questions, but before I go to that, and I had Councillor Mallet waving over there, and it was Councillor McPherson, Councillor Tooman, sorry, I'm on that side. Um, I just want to know why why are you given... Um, I accept about certainly about the rates, understand that, but when uh, this targeted rate provides uh, a favourable financial position to the Council on two of our key indicators, our two metrics, uh, main metrics here. Why is it that you're not recommending that? What is your, your uh, analysis behind that? Because I agree, one of them it does affect uh, in that one year. But why is it that you're not given some of this, particularly the debt balance? I mean, those are, in my view, significant enough to be worthy of discussion. Why? Because, again, we've come back to the principles of, of the uh, financial strategy that we were to provide rating certainty of 3.8%. So. Right. So that that's the one that you've ranked higher than a uh, more favourable position on the others? I think the CEO has a comment to make as well. All right. Do you and, I'll um, add to that. And also at the last meeting there was, uh, towards the end of the, sorry, the, the 9th and 10th of December, there was a... Uh, um, concern as to what that budget was referring to. There was some discussion about whether or not we should be putting the um, wheelie bin target rate on, um, on top of that. When we went away with the resolution to review the uh, draft budget, I took it as an understanding that it would be without the wheelie bin rate from that meeting. So um, I did not include the wheelie bin rate, target rate in the budget when we presented it. Right, so that was sort of you know picking up on the conversations, on the, vibe, the, the vibe and the conversations where we of that meeting. Land. Yep. Okay. We tried our best to achieve the financial strategy as best we can. Right. So yeah, I'm getting getting to you, but I've got a further question on it, and then um, so what what when other councils have introduced Williams? Because of course we are 
substantially behind in our recycling compared to just about everywhere else in New Zealand. What, what have they done in terms of payment for the bins? Because a lot of councils I know have paid bags and all sorts of things now, and we don't have any of that. Um, what, what have they done? Have they put a targeted rate through? or Because a lot of them probably have targeted rates to pay for the waste anyway. So, so it will depend on what, how council is actually procuring the service. So some councils have um, the recycling service or the refuse collection service as a user pays. So the user pays would obviously then pay for any containers. Okay, so um, in that case, in those councils, the public have actually paid for the bins. Yep. Yeah. Other cases is that the contractor actually purchased the wheelie bins, right. but then council then pays back the contract over the contract term. So in essence, uh -huh. it's the same cost to council, but over a longer period of so time. So factored into the contract price. Yes. Yes, okay. And then other councils have uh, presented it to their council as we are now as the most efficient, clean way of just having a one upfront cost. Yes, yeah, so, but what I'm, I guess I'm trying to understand is other councils, when they're deciding, when they're putting them in, have they run with general rate, we just do it, or have they put in targeted rates? Are there other councils that have done that? So it is a mixture, general rate and targeted rate. It all comes down to the council, and it's from, from memory, it's about 50-50. Some councils have the entire refuse collection service as a targeted rate. Others have included in the general rate. There is no um, definitive best practice. Okay, so our benchmarks are usually metros and then those around us. Any comment on those? What, it's a mixture. Mixture as well, right, okay. Well, general rate, target rate and user pays. Right, okay. Helpful, unhelpful, one would say. <laughs> All right, so um, Councillor King, you had a follow-up question, I think, to one of mine. Then I'm going to go down the order of Councillor Mallett, Councillor McPherson, Councillor Toome and Councillor Gallagher. That's my order. So, uh, uh, Yeah, I'm just interested as to why Richard said he put weight on holding, on the political mood, to hold rates down at 3.8%, when you've already said that you didn't put weight on holding the debt down to below the 200 you said that that was for the politicians to decide. Um, based on... So you, you've said you put weight on one and not the other. I, I just yes. okay, so struggling with that. I'll answer that in two, uh, two, uh, two, two parts. The first part, when we considered the uh, various aspects of the financial strategy, all three are, are important. One of them directly impacts on the ratepayer, and the other two was, in the long term, the impact on the ratepayer in terms of our bouncing the books and the, and the consequential impact on debt a less direct impact on rate payers. One of the reasons we put one of the reasons when we look at this, we look at the impact on the rate payer first and that the rate certainty one directly impacts on the rate payer. Secondly, part of the discussion that was had in terms of staff coming back, and it was very much a uh, I wouldn't say an instruction, but an understanding when I came back to um, uh, bring the revised budget was to look at ensuring that we focused on delivering the uh, budget within the financial, the current financial strategy as best we could. And in the way in best we could was we tried to fit it all in. The areas that challenged it wasn't necessarily around the, um, around the target rate for the wheelie bin, it was around the growth and, and so forth. So the growth, we, even with the growth in, and we believe that it's important to fund growth. We've had those discussions and that decision has been put through. We would have still um, not had our growth financial strategy measure of the 200% uh, by 2019. And likewise, we would not have hit the um, rate certainty measure either. So it's about trying to make sure we honour it as best we can, the underlying principles of the 2012, while acknowledging some of the changes that had occurred in the environment. Okay. So, how does pushing out our rates from 2009, pushing our sorry, our the debt bringing revenue. our debt revenue down by two more years, by no. holding a higher debt level, how does that not impact the ratepayer? And that's why I said at the beginning, there's one directly impacts on them now. The other one does, and I didn't say it didn't impact them. It does impact them and indirectly. So, one's a direct impact here and now. The other one, I agree, does impact on the ratepayer over time as well. And we did the best we can while managing the environment that we have confronted with to balance all those factors out. Okay, thank you. Councillor Mallet, I've got you, then Councillor McPherson. Thank you. Um, we look at point four on page 109, 
Uh, it talks about a business case will look at what recyclables will be included in the weedy bins and what will be included in the crate to determine the most cost effective implementation. You look at page 111, <coughs> last heading is implementation. The second paragraph talks about a business case at what recyclables will be looked at, which is repeating what I've just said. But, um, where's the business case? Please. Has that been done? Um, no, it's in development. It's part so we don't even know what's going to go into these bins. It'll be part of the procurement plan for the new contract, um, and the cost will depend on whether or not we only collect one, twos, and five plastics, yeah. or do we collect the entire range of plastics. And obviously, to be able to enable that decision, we'll need to go through some process with um, the market to find out what those costs would be. But aren't we getting way ahead of ourselves? We're, we're talking about putting in the cost. The of buying all of these green bins without knowing what's going in them, without what, knowing what's going to cost to buy them, mm. this seems to be just way, may, may way ahead of itself. No, no, I, no. I, well, hang on, I'm waiting for an answer. Yes, yeah. I'm just trying to get to make sure, Councillor Mount, that you're accurately representing the information. Well, I just read it straight off there, so yeah, no. you can't be that far off. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so can you speak about the cost, because I think you've mixed yep. up cost of wheelie bins yep. and so, what actually is going to go in yep. them? Just at a, a high level, um, what we're talking about is a funding provision in our plan, because Council has asked for an increased level of service. They've asked for more opportunities to recycle, so they've asked for more recycling. So it's a funding provision um, which would then be tested through the business case and the procurement process as we develop the contract. Um, so our expectation is that it will cost more because we're asking for more. So it's the funding provision, I but the Councilor details. I think Councillor Mallet's saying, well, how do you know what the costs of bins and stuff are? Um, for, we've done quite a lot of work yeah. to get to this point to be confident in the, the dollars we're putting forward. But the Council's never seen a business case for this, has it? No, Council hasn't seen a business case for this, it, the um, council has um, um, had a number of workshops where they've talked about the level of service they'd like to see. Um, so our advice is coming back now in terms of the cost of that increased level, the likely cost of that increased level of service. Um, it, it's anchored in some pretty good um, research and re reports sitting in behind it that we have. Um, but ultimately, this is a major contract. We will go to the market and we'll tell them what we want and we'll invite them to um, work with us in how we deliver the level of service that Council wants. I, and as I, Emily said, it will test the economics of um, exactly some of the recycling. But we're suggesting we're going to put uh, $2.8 million in our 10-year plan. We're going to possibly put in a targeted rate. Yep. And there's a heck of a lot of stuff that's not even known yet. Well, I'm just reading this out, and I'm just using my own memory of what I remember as being spoken about. This. Yeah. This seems to be way ahead of itself. So um, specific questions? Yeah, what, what's yeah. going to go in the bin? Um, yep. Who's going to pick them up? What's going so, to cost to pick so them up? How many times are they going to get picked up? We're quite confident on. in the 2.8 million. Well, I'm not. Because that's based on actual mm. cost of purchase of multiple bins that other councils have just procured. So we looked mm. at the most recent um, group of councils, which is Matamata Piako, um, Howick and TCDC. They um, delivered a very similar to the system that we are producing, and their costs were actually based our costs based on their contract costs of obtaining wheelie bins. Okay, so that's the cost of the bins. Yep. So What's the cost of picking them up? So the cost of picking them up has also been we've engaged a consultant who has got um, access to operational costs from another number of councils around New Zealand, um, and he has worked out what he believes is the the best. Um, budget allocation for that collection of, of that service. And what is that? I don't have that detail in front of well, me. Well, we don't have it either. It is yeah. part of the... the um, but where is that? Costs. Is that in this 10-year plan? It's yeah. part of the operating costs, yes, it is. Yeah. So, I think the so how, how much, of our, how much cost has gone into our 10-year plan? for? So what additional cost is the wheelie bins got? On top of the buying the bins... I assume there's another truck, or there's a there's a different so, type so of truck that Councillor Mallet, the CFO wants to address your question. Yeah. So I think um, Councillor Mallet's 
uh, questions are quite valid, but they are answered at the business case stage. Sim similarly to other items that we have in the 10-year plan, we are making provision for those items, but they are still subject to business cases that come up through the normal process. As to the operating costs, there is provision in here for the solid waste contract that has been reassessed as part of um, this process to arrive at the best estimate of what that, in that cost is. And the assumption that we've built in here is that these wheelie bins will be introduced at the next renewal of that contract. Um, any equipment that is part of that contract would be purchased at that time by the contractor and would be their responsibility. And the estimates that have been used are based on the best estimates, including doing the collection for the... So you know the estimates? I don't know. I don't have the figures in front of me, but that was the process well, that well, we went through. Well, does anyone... And with all due respect, you're the guys that did the work. Yep. What, are, what are the figures? Uh, look, we um, we have the figures are built in. They're based on our existing cost of service. Um, we've looked at um, growth factors and a number of factors to build into our budget. So they are there. I just don't have them at the moment. But the cost of the whole service is a lot bigger, obviously, than just the wheelie bins. Mm. Um, but the wheelie bin cost before you is about the extra level of service that councils um, requested. Just um, so what requested um, the information in terms of that inf the information you requested, councillor, has been requested. Okay. So, so you don't. So the what incremental cost is there for, uh, on top of the 2.8 million to buy the bins, what's the incremental cost for, or is that what Renewal is going to get us? <clears throat> yeah. So we'll, we'll we'll have to go away and get the figures, but it is all built into the operating budgets, so we'll have to. Have to come back. Presumably, if we didn't do this, um, we'd save 2.8 million, and whatever incremental costs there are um, for the pickup for the truck, and oh, goodness knows what other costs are re related to it. I don't know what other costs are related to it, but I'll, I'll refer uh, Councillor Mallet to page 107, the first um, line of the budget notes operating Gro uh, growth for curbside ref refuge and recycling contract. Yeah. In the, not accommodated in the previous 10-year plan is a $185,000 increase. That would include the cost that has been estimated for the recycling. That's okay, so, you do, so that's the, you're giving me the gross cost, aren't you, I think? So what's the incremental cost? So you haven't told me the... There is also a paragraph on page 111, which is the... Um, second paragraph after the bullet points yeah. under proposal wheelie bins, which talks about the additional day-to-day -day operating costs uh, being based on the experience of other councils. These are offset by an equivalent reduction in operating costs for the refuge service. Sorry, effectively, that? that's saying that the element of the recycling bins where, where, is effectively... Where's that, sorry? This is uh, page, 111. page 111 under the heading proposal wheelie bins. There is a, uh, a range of bullet points, and then there are two paragraphs, or sorry, three paragraphs. It's that middle paragraph. So it's effectively saying the cost of the wheelie bins themselves is neutral. The, op yep. the operation of the wheelie bins is neutral. Yep. Yep. That's correct. The operation of the wheelie bins, not the purchase of the wheelie bins. Yep. So doesn't quite kind of. So all of the other services are still being provided. The um, other than the paper pickup, is that right? The paper, paper bag. Paper you know, will be yeah. in the bin. It'll be in the green. It will be in the wheelie bin. It's all going to go in the bin. Okay. So, so that's so we save that one. Although doesn't that get picked up by the same people? No, it doesn't. Truck? It's a separate truck at the moment. At the moment we've got three trucks going around. One for the black bags, one for the recycling crate, and a third um, truck for the paper. So what will we have now uh, what, if this count goes through? Two trucks. One for the black bags and one for the wheelie bins and potentially they will still have the crate for glass that may be collected from the same truck that does the wheelie bins or it may be a separate truck so we don't know yet it depends on the contractor and the solution they propose right. so we could have again up to three trucks but we don't okay, know okay so yet. yep Councillor McPherson I've got you next <coughs> yeah look I actually want to go back a step and I think I might have missed an earlier discussion on this um, but the question in my mind is something like, why the hell are we even going down this track with wheelie bins? I've looked at the thing there, operationally cost neutral, 
uh, whatever million extra or 3.04 or something in one of those documents. Um, it's going to deliver us, according to the consultant, at best 9% extra <coughs> collection, and that's a bit of a guess, because uh, I can't see any supporting f figures or documents to that. Um, so I'm asking, is it just one of these nice to have things because Auckland's got, and a few other places have got wheelie bins? I mean, what's wrong with what we have now if it's, not gonna, if it's actually gonna cost us more to do it? I mean, we are, we had a significant, very significant increase in recycling and recyclables collected when we introduced the bins. Um, we have the ability to promote more, to have um, maybe different size bins. But so to so exactly Councillor, what you're system. saying is so why? Why are we going down this track? Why? That was covered, I think, in... Well, I've looked, but, but, yes, I've looked but at the document and I can't see no, anything I, that... Councillor McPherson, what I'm saying is yep, it has been covered, but you've asked, explain why. So can someone give us the short version? Yep. So, so you're taking us back, I guess, to um, the workshops and um, the direction from Council to um, increase our recycling options. So this is the option that we've come up with to implement that and how we can increase our recycling options. So um, look, we keep saying that there's a number of moving parts to this, but a lot of it will depend on the... On the uh, <laughs> but I think, Chris, Chris the, the question is a pretty straightforward one. Why will wheelie bins make a difference, really? And, I mean, Emily, you just verbatim wheel that out. Well, you certainly did at the workshop, so mm. can someone just, no pun intended, wheel it out? Uh, it's, sorry, I'm look, and the figures I'm looking at mm. here yeah. show a 9% increase in recycling, according thought. to the consultant. So we've yeah. looked at all the options that are available to increase recycling. Um, there is obviously our current crate. There is um, increasing the number of crates to say two, there, and there is providing a different container for for the customer. We've also looked at the amount of containers the customer can manage. So obviously, we can't expect the customers to bring out three or four crates every week because obviously that's a lot of work for them as well. And then their uptake and that service would be reduced, and then we wouldn't obtain the benefit of of the recycling they could potentially do. So our main aim is to get all the recyclables that are currently in the black bag out of the black bag into another container so we can recycle them. And, the, and why do we want to do that? Why do we want to do that? Now, why should we do that? Hang on, that, hang on that's not my question, Your oh. Worship. But, uh, uh, well, I, I was the one asking the questions. Yes. And, I, and I, I particularly... Yeah, thanks, was, Councillor McPherson. Just carry on and keep well, going I, I on will, your list. I will list, carry thanks. on with my question, if that's all right with you, Your mm. Worship. Um, I, know, I know I'm here at your sufferance, but my question... No, you're not, Councillor McPherson. It's just, I must say, you know, staff spend a lot of time putting together workshops for us to well, attend I'm and go through these things in infinite detail. I'm sorry, Your Worship. Briefing no, sessions are not formal parts of council. Speaking. And so I'm happy for them to give the short version of those lengthy discussions to remind everyone. But, you know, I mean, you'd have to ask, why do we bother sitting through all those? Briefing sessions, as I've said before, are not formal parts of council discussions. Now, I'm referencing... So just this, ask the question that you I did, answered. and I asked it before. I asked the, about the 9% increase in recyclables um, that's, uh, that's in the report here, from uh, 10,400 to 11,600. Um, and I can't remember what the, what the unit is, but that's the quantum. That's about 9%, 9 point something percent. 11 percent. Is that the, the figure is 11 percent in the report, is that...? Well, uh, if you're taking 10.4 to 11.6, yep. it's at yep, same whatever, 11%, yep. yep. I'll take that. Um, so w how much does that save us? Is that, that all diverted from the waste stream? Yes, so that, that extra 23 kilos per property per year will be taken out of the black bags. So what, currently it goes to landfill and it will be diverted into the recycling stream where we can actually, or it can be reused. And the uh, cost of uh, landfill going to the waste station is what per ton? $161 um, per ton. Okay. And uh, so the, say, the 23 kilos per household is, totals what value over a year? So be that's about, that's about <coughs> a couple hundred K, I guess. No. 
Yeah, it's about, yeah. It's about 1,200 tonnes at 160, so maybe getting close to $200,000. $200,000 a year. Yeah, getting, mm -hmm. And we're talking about, in that report, about spending $3 million to achieve that 200000 a year savings. Yep, but, that, but that, that saving will be determined through the market process with the tender order. It's not a saving that we will bank. It will probably be banked through the price, the market I, I price. I understand that, that yep. it's, uh, you know, it may not be a cash in that sense. It'll yep. be a reduced cost to us, but that, yep. that's the quantum of the savings. Yep. So um, is that a, what sort of return is that in the business sense? Oh, well, I think yeah. councillors yeah. can probably draw their own conclusion there. Yeah. Have you considered yeah. other means of increasing recycling, for instance, promoting, for, you know, in terms of getting that 11%, promoting it? Because I know when we've had promotional campaigns in the past, we have had increases mm -hmm. in recycling. So um, <laughs> my staff are currently underway in, in developing a new um, marketing plan this marketing plan will potentially be a 10-year plan. It will start with the curbside and then go through and include our other services, which is the refuse transfer station and HOC. It will then start... Sorry, what's HOC? The, uh, oh, Hamilton okay. Organic Centre. Oh, yeah. It will then also then increase past council services into the private sector as well. So we're looking at hazardous waste, all that kind of stuff. So it's a 10-year programme with a brand, <coughs> like our Smart Water programme, a big programme that we can deliver. And yes, we are expecting... Um, uptake of recycling through that program, but we do realise that our current service is going to limit the amount of recycling a person can do because at the moment they only have the single crate or if they want to purchase it, two crates. And for a lot of families, if you want to recycle everything, there's not enough space in those two crates to enable that to occur. We also, with the crates, can't provide the service of collecting Grade 5 plastics. Now, when this current contract went out to market, Grade 5 had no market in the recycling world, so there was no reason for us to include that in our recycling bins. But now the market has changed, there is a reuse market for Grade 5 plastics, so we can now start collecting them and then managing that waste in a sustainable fashion. Are there bigger recycling handheld bins around the country? I believe I've seen some that appear to be deeper elsewhere, I haven't measured them. They're all around the same 60 litre capacity because you've got to realise that people do need to be able to lift them and not everyone is as strong as everybody else. I guess it depends whether they're full of uh, empty beer bottles or, exactly. or plastic uh, yeah. drink. <laughs> or we aluminium. also have the problem with the open bins for your grade 5 plastic. So these are your, um, your um, yoghurt bottles. They're quite light plastic. Um, and then potentially for wind blow and litter from these as well. So we've got to manage that as well. So an open bin is not an appropriate um, container to put those in on the curbside. So the finances, the 200000 roughly saved per year, the, how long would that take to sort of re pay off the uh, extra capital cost? It's around about 15 years, Councillor. Thanks. OK, thank you. Uh, Councillor Tooman? Yeah, thank you, Richard. Um, Re reading this, the, what's going to go in the wheelie bin, from what I can understand, is uh, paper, uh, plastics, tins, tins. maybe. Yes. Currently, of course, you put all this out at the moment and they separate this on the roadside. Yes. You've got a guy who chucks something in the back and something in the front and over the top. Some in there. <laughs> now, with the way that I, I, I perceive that the paper is diminishing within our community, you know, I noticed the well, Wokido Times here, I don't know how much longer they will be <laughs> printing a newspaper because everybody seems to He's read it online. Down get down reported. Yeah. You know? He's writing that down. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, the knives will be out, mate. <laughs> people seem to be going away from the, the newspaper delivered to home, which I, seems to be the vast majority of what goes into the bin. Um, it's a, we're looking at a 240-litre bin which I read is to be uplifted fortnightly only. Mm -hmm. um, now, it seems to me to be a hell of a big bin, which, according to my calculations, will actually mean that every household will actually be producing or putting out 6,240 litres in that bin per annum, whereas I very much doubt if we're doing that at the present time. So, uh, yep, sorry. 
Have we, we're still having the black bags picked up every week, is that correct? That's correct, yes. Okay. I noticed that the contract expires in July 2017, uh, which is just over two and a half years away. With having to lift the wheelie bin, which they're not having to, well, it's only the ones who actually purchase the wheelie bin from um, Trans Pacific, I think it is at the moment, who are actually having to do that, is this not going to throw a hang of a lot of extra cost onto the um, operator for actually having to lift this with his lifting gear on the truck? So the trucks for contract, our current contract is approximately 15 years and the reason why we chose that is because that's the potential life of a truck. truck yep. So what we'll be doing is through the contract negotiations, the life of a truck with the new lifting gear would probably be in the same level as the length of the contract. So if that truck's got a seven year life, yeah, the potential of the contract will have seven years. And that enables the contractor to manage his own operating costs, renewal costs, maintenance costs through that contract term. So would it be fair to say then that the it is anticipated that the contract will for collecting the stuff will increase considerably? Well you've got to weigh yeah. off the there's going to have to be new trucks anyway. So sure. if we continued with the service and it was the same contractor, the potential is he's going to have to purchase new trucks 1 July 2017 anyway because his current trucks are almost out of service. So there will need to be new trucks purchased regardless. You then need to consider the offset of the the, the person, the runner, who collects the current um, yep. crate and does a sorting on site on at the curb versus the truck driving up lifting, dumping it in the truck and then taking it to a sorting facility somewhere else. So that's where the going out to the market will actually produce the most efficient uh, way mechanism for the contract. Thanks. Councillor Gallagher. Um, just coming back to process and I think you've made a very good uh, case in terms of moving forward. And I'm, and I'm coming back to Councillor Mallet's and Councillor McPherson's questions, particularly Councillor Mallet. I remember we had workshops. Just remind me, and uh, forgive me, uh, and, and I enjoyed the Waikato Times this morning reading the paper version, I assure Councillor Tooman. When it's wet, I regularly ring the operator Manila. I feel very guilty given the, the, the typhoons. I've had a typhoon and then I'm moaning about my wet paper, but I do say that to the person in Manila. Since they transferred those oh, jobs from Hamilton about to Manila, the country, for the record. You're talking about the, the overseas. You ring Manila about not delivering your paper. Correct. Delivering your paper This is wet. the new world. This, someone and of course, then I have to say, look, Manila come and deliver I have to read it. No, I have to, because Manila's where the Times is now based with is their switchboard. Right? Okay. Yes. <laughs> they've moved to Manila, but they've oh, still got the, the print press is going to Auckland. Mm. The switchboard's gone to Manila, but they've got an office in Hamilton. That's good. The, the proofreading uh, now, to Wellington. Yeah. Got to Elton, I Just bet you didn't realise this was going to happen to you when you arrived here about, today. I'm moaning about a wet paper <laughs> when I ring someone who's had a typhoon in Manila. Um, <laughs> someone proofread the Times. Mm. Chris, can you just tell me, in terms of process, that was an aside. Can you tell me um, the process? We had a workshop, all right? Did, did it go to the SNP or did it go to a formal committee council that to... to um, no, it was, it was just workshop to give us direction as we worked up proposals to bring through this process. Um, so generally that direction you gave us was uh, not at this point in time to look at um, user pays. Um, but to look at more options for recycling and a steer towards the wheelie bin, and this is the information coming through. Council did um, resolve at the last meeting in December, and I'm not sure the status of that resolution, but to come back at the end of February to consider the uh, user pay system for refuse as well. So um, despite the direction of the workshop, we have a, um, a direction from the December meeting to come back and... I guess relook at the user pays as well. So, so that point of order, Your Worship, is there a resolution on the books uh, supporting or requiring council to introduce wheelie bins? I'm not talking about the payment system, potential payments, I'm talking about the actual decision to go down there. Um, I understand on the 9th and 10th of December, a resolution was made to include the wheelie bins in this draft budget. Could we have that up on the wall just so we can see it? Yes. Thank you. So any other questions, Councillor Yeah, Gallagher? just, um, I mean, obviously, for another time, because it seems to me a lot of the questions being asked today, you know, genuine questions, um, really should have been 
all of us, and I include myself, a process by which all of those questions would have been cleared off. And the time we come to a session like this, we're fairly clear as a direction. We're only going to, at this point, discuss the, the, you know, the funding or how we, how we fund it and whether we include it or not. So I've got the bits around the, the, the advantages of, of the process in terms of the recycling and, and the litter, improving litter in high density areas, I think this will do as well, because that's another huge issue as we know we want to pursue that. The options, where well, you talked about other local authorities, some of those local authorities also have a uniform annual charge. Were they, this kind of thing would be included in, in the UAG, would it? Like Auckland has a, a flat household uniform annual charge, separate from the rates based on capital value. This kind of stuff would be in their UAG. I'm sorry, I, I don't have that, um, that knowledge of whether it is in, or not included. Because I guess the question I'm wanting to ask myself is, is um, you know, I guess the notions of what is the fairest best way to, fund, if we do this, what is the fairest and best way to fund this? Just remind me again, and I'm, I'm, forgive me if I'm a little confused, the current proposal is, is that this comes out of our general rating? There it is up there. Right, up there. Right. So the initial purchase price, uniform charge. Uh, just, just for clarity, that is the resolution that was passed on the 9th and 10th. The proposal was to have the uh, wheelie bins funded from the general rates. There was an option for council to consider the targeted rate. They considered it and on the 9th and 10th passed a resolution. Um, so that's the resolution that was actually So, So passed. where is the resolution that we actually use wheelie bins as the uh, recycling collection system? Not that, that, That's only a resolution as to how you might fund them. And it's disappeared. It's too, coming. So we it's coming. Oh, no, we're we're back to blink it up. Blink it up. Yeah. Yeah. And we're suddenly starting to be retyped again, which was a bit strange. No, no, well, yeah, it's an organic council. Mm. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, General Manager, just, just uh, to refresh everyone's memory, yeah, to yeah. give some context, yeah. uh, perhaps I might start. Uh, the council has a waste minimisation plan. I mean, I know this is all in the report, but, but let's get the short version. And uh, you came to us and said... Uh, you need to start implementing this because we've got some legal obligations around it. And here are some options for the council to think about, about how we might implement that. And you presented us with, uh, my recollection was, you know, from a little bit yeah. to the full, full banana, didn't you? Correct. And somewhere along that continuum, you were seeking some guidance, well, where do you want to land here? A uh, different council to the one that signed off on the waste minimisation plan. We get this money from the government if we do certain things. and. And, and we, we've got this piece of legislation and we actually have to comply with it. And um, I, my recollection was you had two goes at it with us. Well, that was right. You yeah. came with the full Monty and then you came back with a, a more focused version. Okay. And, uh, and your purpose in that was you needed to get some direction to, to work up some proposals to get before us because of our legislative requirements under the waste minimisation legislation and our plan. Have I got that journey Correct. right so far? Correct. And this is the outcome of that. And where did the wheelie bins come? And again, my recollection was we didn't want way down there, which was something like paid bags and wheelie bins and all manner of things. Sure. Uh, refuse depots around the city and there's lots of things. Right? Yep. We didn't want that one. Yep. And, and we didn't want nothing. And we spent a lot of time talking about wheelie bins and size. And in fact, my recollection was you bought in a wheelie bin for us to look at. That was right? Yeah. Yep. So. The size of it. Have I, have I got that right? Mm -hmm. You bought one in, didn't you? Yep. What, to a full brief then? Yeah, know. they bought one. Remember, they bought one in for us was to see what it looked like. It was sitting out at the back door. No, I didn't yeah. see that. They did. They should the to back, say what did, what size did it look like. I well, don't think I've missed any briefings. No, it's no, you have You had that. Side, it stands about sort yeah. of that high. Drinking? They carried that in, and then they put it outside the room for us to have a look at. But anyway, getting so, I think Councillor McPherson's right. I don't recall Council person we've resolved anything. They wanted some guidance about what are they going to put forward because we've got this plan that we have to comply with because of the law. And we can accept or not accept it, but um, it landed around here. It certainly wasn't down there and it wasn't here. It was somewhere in the middle. Perhaps and this is the best option they've given us. Perhaps your worship, in, in these circumstances mm. where something new is being <coughs> contemplated, at least a sort of business as usual or as close as legally as possible, mm. um, 
you know, could be put up as the alternative. The, you know, mm -hmm. continuing with a new contract for the existing type of service mm -hmm. will cost. We expect this much and and deliver this much result. You know, so did, we can compare them. Did you give that to us? Yes, it was part of the workshop. Yes, you gave that to us. Um, yes, it was yeah. part of the briefing. Yeah. Workshops under our regulations are public. Briefings are not. Um, and I certainly wasn't But we got there. some information on things, what we're saying. Mm. Well, I've looked at the reports that came mm. to the meeting in December, your worship, mm. and we have today, mm. and that's why I'm asking questions, because oh, okay. I wasn't there oh. at the informal briefing. Right, right. OK. Right. So at the end of the day, um, let's just get to work what we're going to do. This is in the budget. If, if councillors want it out, I need a resolution. If you want that one not there, I need a resolution. I need, who wants to put something <coughs> on the table? Why do you need a resolution? Because it's not on the books at the moment. It's, it's in the budget at the moment, funded through the general rate. It's so, been included in the budget. So, so to be clear, the costs are included in the budget that was presented, yeah, but, yeah. but no the targeted rate is not. There is no it's, resolution at the moment to bring in um, wheelie bins for... It's in the budget, yeah. Yep, yeah. That we've approved the draft budget we approved yesterday. So, it's so in there. Just to be clear, those are the resolutions that were passed on the ninth and tenth meeting. There was the first resolution to that three point oh four million funding included in the draft plan. So that was on there. So there's a resolution to put it into the budget. There's also which we have and is included in the information we discussed for the last two days. There's also a resolution on the books to um, effectively levy a targeted rate um, over and above what was included in the draft budget. That revenue is not included in the draft budget you've seen Why today. Not? I have a question. But the, sorry, can I just just ask uh, Richard? I, I I thought that we were talking about um, that the resolution to do the wheelie bins had always been approved, and I couldn't mm -hmm. remember that yes. resolution. Oh. Yes. But I thought that we were we were told that the resolution to approve the uniform charge had never been approved, had had not been approved. But you're saying it had been approved. Up to the point that the uh, was made at the beginning of this um, this section, if we we presented it based on the fact that the target rate wasn't included, but a resolution was passed, and we would need to revoke that resolution if we were to lock lock out that target rate out of the budget. Okay, sorry, that's not the way I understood. Okay, thank you. Okay, so motion. I just have a question. Mm. It sounds semantics to me. So, if we've approved the fact that we're going to budget for wheelie bins in our service, does that not imply that wheelie bins have been approved? Well, it does. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I wanted to make sure I understood that correctly. So um, that's the current situation. Do I have any motion on the table? So that's, that's so what. And thank you for your answer to my question before your your worship. Um, the although it, the minutes don't record the arrival of the wheelie bin in the committee room, but <laughs> the because uh, it wasn't a formal meeting. But that's the status quo. So it, technically, we have to do nothing at this point. That's an option, and this just goes out as a proposal in the, in the uh, LTP. Mm. If if you did not pass a resolution that either that changed that, then at that point I would be putting into the budget the the rates. A uniform the targeted rate. That's right. At the moment they are not in the budget, but if there was no change to those resolutions, I would then be putting in as a the targeted rate as a change from today. Yes. I don't. Sorry. I don't particularly, because I wasn't there at the secret briefing session, want to um, second guess what was, uh, sorry, closed shop briefing session. Um, uh, second In guess. Of, uh, order, Your Worship, the, the sessions are open to all councillors, and if they choose not to attend, that's entirely a councillor decision. Mm. I was actually at a family function. Uh, overseas on that time, Councillor Chesterman. Uh, and I'm quite uh, happy to acknowledge that right, but they're not secret sessions. Well, they're secret as far as the public are concerned. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, they, I, I'm happy to withdraw and apologise. I think that's the parliamentary term, Councillor Gallagher. Um, that w I wasn't privy to those discussions. I'm not trying to second guess the discussions that took place or the results thereof, <laughs> but... I think I, I would certainly like to see the alternative costed. 
So, and other, so what? I, no. Motion. Yeah. It's yeah. a point of order, Your Worship. Yes. I would like to understand, it's my understanding I should say, that if a councillor is absent from any briefing, Notice. workshop or whatever, mm. meeting, mm. then it's that councillor's responsibility to get up to speed, to take, their, take the uh, uh, steps to uh, learn and, and find out what actually happened at those meetings or meeting that, that was missed. If Is it's that a, my correct if it's a formal, if it's no, a formal meeting I'm asking with them papers. Stop, stop. We are going to discuss this. Procedural yeah. matters about getting up to speed and... Your Worship, you, uh, no, you stop, interrupted sorry, me. Sorry, Councillor McPherson. We are talking today. I'm not going to listen to that. Or, Deputy Mayor, are you in this meeting or are you having a separate discussion over there? Because we're paying attention to this. So, Councillor McPherson, I think you were saying, you do you uh, want to change that? So, if you do, yes, so, tell us how. Yes, but I'm also trying to tell you why, and I have the right well, to do well, that. Well, I think, first of all, you need to tell us sort of what is it that you want to change, and then the why, because that helps us understand where you're coming from. No. What is it you want to change? What I would like to see, and which would be an addition to this, not to remove anything that's up there at the moment, because I don't want to second guess previous discussions of council. I'm respecting that some people have made that decision. Mm -hmm. uh, what I would like to see in addition is the costings uh, and results of uh, business as usual, I'm calling it colloquially, which is to continue with the same type of collection service under the new co contract, an estimate of the costings and the collection amount that would be achieved, coupled with the promotions that uh, the uh, staff member has talked about, and etc. So something like that, so that when it comes back for um, final decision, and I'm not trying to say it should be before the 20th of February, uh, at least we have some alternatives uh, presented in public session, uh, and I think actually the public would like to see that too, so they can say, do we want to pay two or three million dollars for this new system, extra, um, and this is what it achieves, or would we prefer to go with, let's call it status quo? So um, the wording of your motion... Wording would be that staff, it's, this is an additional, here, yeah, that staff present to council the costings and results, and, and estimated results, probably best estimated results of a business as usual uh, recycling collection system. And I'm not putting a time limit on that, but it's within the LTP round, perhaps we could say. I'd like to signal an amendment. Excuse me, just to be clear, the first two items on the board were the previous resolutions already made. So this is there's no result there's no this motion is a on mo this, is no, this is council business motion. motion. New, new motion it'll be a motion. motion. Okay. And have you got a seconder for that? Yeah. So who's who's I seconding? No, no, she's I'll second it. So Councillor Gell is seconding that. Can I just check before I come to you? Um, one of the things that you've no. general manager you've told us is that you are um, starting contract negotiation preparations now. Uh, and that is a lengthy period to go to the market to get the best price for Hamilton. And you have said, you said today and you've said before, that you need clear guidance around what it is exactly you are negotiating for <clears throat> in that process. That's correct. What we got now or something different and you, so you need clarity. Have I, have I got that right? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Yes. Otherwise, you don't know what you're going out to the market for. What kind of service is it? A, a point of process. No, I just, I just, oh, sorry, I, I thought you got your answer. I, I haven't finished yes. yet because I, I just need to understand. Is that what you did say? Uh, that's correct. But I think the um, point of clarity can come from finalisation of the LTP. Right. Um, okay. That was my process. point. Yeah. Trying to understand what the timing yeah. of that yeah. was. Yeah. So um, we'll wait and see what the final answer is on 1 July 2015, yeah. the timing. Right, okay. Your Worship, because I don't think legally this can, anyone from this council can go out with a, a contract 
proposal to the public no. uh, until we have a legal decision which doesn't take place until the LTP yeah. is finalised. I'm really well aware of that, Council Refusal. What I was trying to understand is where the staff were sort of in gathering the information process because I particularly, and I'm sure all of us, want them to have clarity and get us the best price. And I just wanted to understand where they were in that journey. I guess I was being considerate yeah. of them. So uh, we've got a mover and a seconder for that. Councillor Forsyth, you were foreshadowing an amendment, and I'll come to you, Councillor Mellon. What was that? What was your amendment going yeah, to Yeah, if you could basically to um, remove the targeted rate. So to go ahead with, the wording's already up there, to go ahead with the, okay, to rescind part two of the motion then. So what's of, the of the original resolution in December, I want to rescind part two. I think, Your Worship, that would be um, separate to the motion that's on the table at the moment. I think, I think Councillor McPherson's motion's on the table. So she oh, can't do an amendment to his right motion? Yes, yeah, she could do an amendment. She's saying she wants to do an amendment to take out the uniform charge targeted mm. rate. Yeah. Leave the first bit and take that bit out. Can she do that? Mm -hmm. Madam Chair, that wouldn't be an amendment to my bit. Uh, that well, would be an amendment to the yeah, that's yeah, already in there. The holder of I, the think, I think what the Council's got before them is a resolution, which is the first two two paragraphs up there, and yeah, then there's a new motion. So, um, so I think... The, if, what's the process? Let, let's do that. Let's follow the process here. What process do you recommend? I recommend follow? that Council deals with the motion that's on the table. Right. And then if Councillor Forsyth wishes to remove paragraph two, it's done by way of revoking that part of the resolution that was passed earlier in the meeting. And can she do that irrespective of what happens to Councillor McPherson's motion because it's yes. a separate motion? Yeah. Yes. Should be able to. Okay, yes. so, so yes. just make it really clear for it's us a as a group. Mm. Um, we deal with Councillor McPherson's motion, yes. and whatever the outcome yes. of that, yes. then Councillor Forsyth can put her motion yes. on the table. Yes, to rescind part two. Forsyth has foreshadowed a motion right. to revoke paragraph two of the resolution that was passed earlier in the meeting. Okay. And that is, that is That's the process, process we follow. Yes. Okay, all right. So, Councillor Mallet, you had a question? Yeah, I'm quite. I'm pretty supportive of what Martin and uh, Dave are trying to do. Except if you look on page 110, our, the advice there is that the Hamilton City Council. Oh, hang on, that's the waffle. We normally talk about how great we are. Um, under what heading, Gary? Under waste management and minimisation. Uh, the current. If you if you go, there's three bullet points. If you go to the paragraph above it, the current service is not sufficient, and will not deliver on the vision and improved service, poor English, is required. That is required. So I think we're being told that what Dave's trying to do doesn't meet up with our waste management uh, process, which is uh, something that's gone before public consultation. Mm -hmm. that's correct. correct. That's our waste minimisation plan yep. that we're required to do. That's right. Yep. So staff are telling us that they, our business as usual does not meet up with a commitment we've made. That's that's correct. That's what we've presented to you. That it's not. And I, I, I totally yeah. understand what you're saying. So yeah. I'm just and I'm. I don't want to torpedo my mate here, but um, how mm -hmm. does that square? It? So if we go oh. back to business as usual, I mm -hmm. see there's a advice from the staff saying the current position is not the current service is not sufficient and will not deliver on the vision. Through your worship, may I add to that, that there is actually funding associated with that waste minimisation plan. If we were to uh, not meet that plan, then there would be funding actually Remote. endangered. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. You, forgive my difficulties here with the process being followed. We had a secret, I mean, sorry, a briefing session um, that was private to us. Point no, of order, no recorded minutes. What's, point of order. What's your point of order? That Councillor McPherson knows 
uh, has been told, etc., that the meeting was not secret, and he's continuing to use that phrase, and I think it's totally inappropriate. So what you're saying is, I'm just looking for the section on points of order, what is it? <clears throat> it's 313.7c. It's called How to Deal with Councillor First off, sorry. 313.7, points of order. So I'm looking at that, you're saying that it's misrepresenting what something actually is. Mm. Uh, your Worship, could it's I ask... on using an untruth, Your Worship. Could I ask what the legal status of the briefing sessions are in, under Council uh, standing orders? The status of the briefing sessions, Democracy Manager. The briefing sessions, is that? Yes, yes. The briefing session is a briefing session. <laughs> is it for councillors only, or are the public allowed to attend? They're not. They're not publicly advertised. The legislation does not require them to be publicly advertised. So anyone in the public who wasn't a councillor or involved in management or staff wouldn't. A, know about them, and B, be able to attend? Mm. The media a member has of the, attended. Is that correct? A member of the public has not approached um, democracy to attend a council briefing. Did we not have a discussion at the start of last year where the issue of whether briefing se our briefing sessions should be open to the public or not in one of those briefing sessions, and the uh, feeling of council, apart from three members, was that they should be kept to public excluded? Yes, yeah, so briefing sessions, are, you're right, they're not um, advertised. Yeah. And then we have had um, some workshops, for example, in the rating process, we had public workshops. Yeah, you're right. Uh, uh, so perhaps in response to Councillor Forsyth's uh, <coughs> notice of motion, uh, point, of point of order, um, just call them briefing sessions, because that's yeah. what they're called. All right, carry on, thanks. Yes. Uh, question? Yes. Uh, would it be a correct term to say that they were publicly excluded briefing sessions and were not covered by the Act? Because in terms of the... the there's no, there can be no decision-making from those meetings because they're, they're not, as I understand it, included in the purpose of the Local Government Act. They are, if you like, within law, would be regarded as uh, informal briefing sessions where the public's excluded, informal briefing sessions for staff and elected members. Would that be a correct description? I think so, yeah. I, w I wouldn't call them a public excluded meeting, councillor. So if you wouldn't call them public excluded, would the public be able to attend if they asked? I wouldn't call them a public excluded meeting. <laughs> uh, <just> hey, look, <laughs> yeah, so, so guys, can we... I, I, I think just, it's just... Oh, just the, yeah, look, just stop. This is a really important discussion we're having at the moment, and it is a significant item in our budget. And... Um, Despite the torturous journey, some really good points have been raised. So, Councillor McPherson, you've raised some really good points. So, do you want to just carry on with what you wanted to say? Because it's I was actually valuable. To. So, let's focus on that. Okay? Yes, I was hoping to, Your Worship. Good. M my difficulty, and I believe the public's difficulty <clears throat> even more so, will be that they are not privy to the uh, rationale behind going with wheelie bins as a means of achieving our waste minimisation targets or plans. Point of order, Your Worship. Yep. It's his seer that um, we undertook a public consultation process, so it's my view that the, council, uh, that the public did understand and had feedback into the process of, of our waste minimisation plan, which would have included wheelie bins. The, the plan itself... Um, plan, yes, not not the discussion that I'm... I'm just waiting for the, the staff to answer. The, the plan itself did not mention wheelie bins. Well, sorry, the, when there's a point of order, the chair deals with it, not members of staff. Oh, That's the proper procedure. Oh, no. <laughs> but look, look. Well, I was trying to talk. I know, I hear you. I hear all of you. <laughs> um, I think... Uh, what Emily, because I would have gone to Emily and asked her, what she was trying to do is just jump in and say, well, actually, our consultation process didn't specifically mention wheelie bins, so I'm not going to beat her up about that. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you Emily. So in response to your point of order, mm. let's just let Councillor McPherson say what he wants to say, and then I'm going to go to the General Manager, because a point has been raised about 
you know, it's the staff's job to give us advice if they are concerned about the way we might have worded something or what we want to do, right? Because we can't go off and do something that we can't, quotes, do. So, Councillor McPherson, finish what you want to say and let's well, just get I think, some... I think I'll have to start again, Your Worship. Oh, um, well... Yes, well, no, the, the, the point I'm trying to make is that the, this is a public document going out for consultation that has an assumption, to think about this, that we're going to bring in wheelie bins at the cost of $3 million plus um, with a handful, and I'm not exaggerating, of words saying that it's a better uh, waste minimisation outcome than business as usual. A lot of implications there, no facts and figures to support that. Uh, so I'm not saying that that is even a wrong outcome. What I'm saying is that the public have got nothing in terms of wheelie bins versus uh, the current bin system to actually measure the outcomes against each other. Nothing in the document that they're going to have come out. Um, so all I'm trying to do here is say, give us the facts and figures for the business as usual. If you say it doesn't meet the waste minimisation plan that I agree has been consulted on, um, then uh, show where that doesn't happen, where it falls short. Um, give us that fa the public the facts and figures. Give me as a councillor who wasn't at that closed briefing session. Um, and we can make our judgment accordingly and they can submit accordingly. It's going to be very hard for a member of the public to submit on why wheeling bins are a better idea or a worse idea without having something to compare it against. Thank you. Um, so, General Manager, just, just can you just respond? I'll come to you. Just, res just in response to that, um, because some question was raised about what the report actually says, which... Um, you've raised a number of times with us before about our legal obligations in respect of waste minimisation. So. Yeah. Um, through you, Worship, just as a suggestion, I think uh, the information in, is um, in here. I think we could perhaps present it a little bit more clearly. Uh, but just to remind councillors, there's also a live resolution on, um, on the books, which I think is just put up at the moment. That staff report back to the 25th of February 2015 Council meeting for the Council to consider the implications including costs for user pay system for refuse. So I think was, we can was, incorporate... That the, was a resolution on the whole on the big cat of the February meeting. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I think we can incorporate um, uh, what's requested in Councillor McPherson's mm. uh, motion into, into that particular meeting, it probably fits quite well with that mm. um, further information we're coming back with there. And um, and that is part of the report back on the 25th of February. We can incorporate and make sure we deal, I think, with the, the motion to councillor's satisfaction through that reporting right. process. So knowing that, Councillor McPherson, does that kind of tick the box so the motion's I, in some ways not needed? The process, I believe yeah. it does. Yeah, and okay. My second it does too. Right, so we don't need that motion Correct. now? Thank yeah. You. Okay. All right, so now we're back to, on the 25th of February, um, there was a, a report back anyway going to happen, and that's going to encapsulate some of this other stuff. So now we have, um, just get rid of that. Um, so this is what, what we have um, about funding, and Councillor Forsyth wanted to move a motion about removing part two. We've now seem to have it as part three, but is that still your intention? Because as you heard the CFO, he is going to put that into the draft, the targeted rate, because he's got to bring back to us on the 25th accounts for us to look at. So if you don't want that in, if, some, if you don't want that in, someone's got to put something on the table. Are you doing that? Yeah, I'm just trying to think about the total context of everything if we're going to be coming back on the 25th and whether um, something I want to do now or, the, or then. I'm not sure. Anyone else? Uh, are you allowed to move a motion in the same meeting to reverse a resolution that we've already come to by members who voted for it in the first place? 
Yes, Councillor. Um, standing orders make it clear that at the same meeting, if Council gets fresh facts or information, Council can revisit a resolution and revoke it or alter it. But you need 75% majority to do that. So that would be nine members today voting to revoke that third paragraph up there, and that, that's possible. So do you consider that there's been new facts put out I, about? I think, I think the passage of time has provided certainly additional information for Council to consider. And just to add to that, the overall budget presentation that we've provided provides a, a broader context of where um, all the information stacks up, so it probably does provide some additional information. So the, really the challenge now is whether or not 75% of councillors would vote in favour of rescinding that resolution. Just on that point, procedural point, Your Worship, uh, can I check through you whether at a subsequent meeting we could change that without needing 75%, just a simple majority? Yes, Councillor. A, a report by the Chief Executive or the Mayor to the Council revoking an earlier earlier resolution, setting out the reasons why I could achieve that. Well, that, Only may, may, that may help Councillor Forsyth's desired outcome. I thought that we needed six months to go by. Could we could we see the point of order? Sorry. Uh, yes. Is there is so, a time constraint, what you just told so, yeah, me? Um, the democracy manager is um, just confirming your point, Councillor King. Yeah. 3.8.4. The Council may, on a recommendation contained in a report by the chairperson or chief executive or the report of a committee, revoke or alter all or part of resolutions previously passed at meetings. At least two clear working days notice of any meeting to consider such a proposal must be given to members accompanied by details of the proposal to be considered. And that only requires a simple majority as opposed to the 75% majority. That That's my understanding, Councillor. Good evening, Mayor. Yes, thank you. <coughs> Look, I'm just seeking a decision. It will go out to the public mm. for consultation. Okay. And the public may have a a view or not. So what I'm wondering is that that's very simple there. The initial purchase price is funded through the uniform charge. So the public will understand through that that's an increased uh, amount on their rates demand. What's the option if councillors here don't agree with the uniform charge? Uh, how does that get paid for? It's okay. already in the budget. In the it's already in the budget. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's already. That's what so really, uh, so if you don't want that, someone has to move a motion, and 75% of us today have to agree to remove that. I'd be happy to move all of that if you want to start to get the the matter on the table. I'll move that's, the motion. That's already. That, that, that oh, sorry, that, that's, that's already, already the motion. Yeah. Yeah. So, so if you'll, clip. you'll move a motion, Councillor King, that mm -hmm. says to rescind that resolution. And part of it, which part of it, the targeted rate aspect of it. Yes, right. Can you is, please put that up? Is there the a manager? seconder for that, Councillor? Can Mellon. we just get it up on the board first yep. so we're clear on what we've got? So just to make this clear, I understand there's potentially some uncertainty. The, the base budget has been prepared, including the costs associated with wheeling bins. What you've seen in the last two days does not include a targeted rate revenue associated with it. And the, the resolution that's been put on the table by Councillor King is to revoke the resolution that was put in place at the last meeting to put a target rate on. on at, at this uh, meeting? Yeah, at this meeting, sorry. Day. Yeah, sorry. The previous day. Thank you, Councillor McPherson, for clarity. I, I just want to look at what I'm putting up first before we. <laughs> <laughs> yes, right. It's always handy. Your Worship, can I? Wait a minute, just so. Okay, so what that means is, if that was passed, wheelie bins are in, but not funded by a targeted rate. Which is what the te this draft plan actually yeah. shows. Which is the staff recommendation. Which is the staff recommendation. Okay. 
and on the 25th, irrespective, on the 25th, more information is coming anyway because Council has asked for some information to come forward on the 25th about user pays for rubbish bags. And in addition to that, more information is coming about recycling. Okay, okay. no, I'm not comfortable with my motion, so I don't want to go with it. Somebody else can move it if they want to. Councillor Mallet is moving it. Is there a seconder for it? <clears throat> Anyone? No. Okay, Councillor Mallet, no. There's no one else. So just so that we're clear then, if after February the 25th, or during the meeting of February the 25th, when we receive further information, yeah. democracy manager and councillors then want to revisit it because they, you know, might have a different look at it. What is required then? The same? No, it would be a new meeting, Your Worship, so it would need to come to the council by way of a report from the chief executive or yourself. Or, or a, start, a general manager? Yes. Or a notice of motion. Yes. No, 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 it was a... No, just, so, so at the next meeting, the general manager is going to present a report and he's going to tell us about user pays for rubbish bags and give us yes. some more information on yes. recycling. If after receiving and hearing all that, a councillor moves that motion that's now been removed, mm -hmm. um, what is required? Just a 50% majority? Yes, Your Worship. And, and the general manager would include in the report um, flagging the option to revoke an earlier past yeah. resolution. Okay, so just a standard report? Mm. Mm. A standard right. process? Yep. Okay. Yes. Good, we're clear. Councillor Mallet. So what we're doing now is we are, the staff are putting up, have got a, they've given us a document which contravenes, well, contravenes, well, yeah, which would, Resolution. But yeah, it recommends something different. Yeah. Well, I'd word it slightly different. It does not um, reflect that council of resolutions yeah. because of the feedback that we received at the meeting previously. From here, the process would be that we would write draft writing policies to reflect that, um, and those would be considered. So we would be writing draft rating policies and other documents that as part the uniform that charging. would now be reflecting that if that that. Um, was not rescinded. So from here, there would be a number of documents that would be prepared and come back on the 25th of February, which would reflect that current so, resolution that has been passed. So the next set of stuff you come that comes to us will have the uniform charge in it, won't it? Yeah. That's right. And that, that'll be in a financial um, accounts form, OK? On the 25th, we're getting them in the financial accounts type form because they've got to prepare a draft. Yes, Deputy Mayor. Yes, question, uh, Your Worship. In the first sentence, for a user pay system for refuse, mm. does that mean that we then can consider a pay per bag process? Because that's how I read that. Yes, that's right. So yep. it brings into question our whole briefing process where we clearly decided not to go there and it's come back up here. So you've got to wonder what value briefings have. Mm. That's right. I guess if we just change that. Any, any kind of workshops or briefings, that's right. Because at any time we can decide to do something. Yeah, yeah we can change our mind at any time, can't we? We can. Yeah. And we often have to. <laughs> yes, Councillor McPherson has been here some time, will tell you, yes, that often happens. Um, right, any, are there any other questions on where we're at? No, there's no motion because Councillor Mallet could not get a seconder. So just to be clear, subject to something happening between our completion of this process, we're going to the public with a, a uniform annual charge for wheelie bins. Is that so right? Just to explain, to explain the process going forward on 25th of well, February. Like I said, subject to anything yep. else happening. You see a number of touch it's points correct. on the way. 25th? The answer is yes. Yeah. Yep. Okay. The answer is yes. Clear. Thank you. Yep. Yep. The Mayor answered it. Yes, it's yes. <laughs> Trying to get a I knew the answer to the question, I just wanted to yes. make sure everyone else knew the answer. Extrapolated out version. Why don't you write something for the meeting? <laughs> All right, so um, just so, um, because this is a public meeting, um, I think given given the discussion, uh, clearly um, the, there'll be more discussion on the 25th of February um, about rubbish and recycling. Um, I think the public understand rubbish. 
and recycling rather than refuse. So we'll look forward to your report, um, which has got a lot more information in it, and we'll have another go at it on the 25th of February. Yeah. And in the meantime, could I ask you to make sure that you recirculate any information, you know, stuff which I think are, I mean, there's lots of stuff on the website as well, all about this, just so, to make sure that everyone has got that information. You guys, you know, the waste minimisation plan, there's a whole pile of stuff on our website all about all this, but, you know, make sure we've all got that waste minimisation plan and stuff that we know. And also, sorry, just on a one page, you just um, circulate the relevant formal resolutions of Council from last July, whenever, just so I've got a context. I understand about the the workshops, some which I'm not sure whether it was a public excluded or public included workshop, but that has no decision power, but it gives indication trends and all of that stuff and points of view. And I recognise Councillor Chesson's got every right to reintroduce because there was no decision, but just help, just gives us a series of, of just how we got from A to B uh, in, in terms of formal resolution of the Council. Okay, so, um, right, so there's no um, hope now of finishing by lunchtime because we've still got some other matters to do. So um, the options councillors, as we carry on and probably finish about half past one, depending on how much conversation or discussion people want on Rota Kauri, which is in the report, uh, and the final resolutions to just bring together the draft, um, which is, I think one line or something, and uh, receive the report on cricket. So those are the three outstanding items. Mm -hmm. Or we can break for lunch and come back at quarter past one. What would break you like to lunch. do? Break for lunch. Break, break for lunch. Break for lunch. Break for lunch. Okay. Yeah. All right, break for lunch, back at quarter past one.